grace and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. On behalf of the Goss family, I would like to welcome you to this service for June Goss. We gather today in the sure and certain hope of the resurrection to give thanks to God for the life of Mildred June Goss, to receive the comfort of the Holy Spirit and to proclaim the good news of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Let me acknowledge right up front that this experience is unusual. We are not able to gather as a body to surround the Goss family with our presence or our physical compassion. We need to take this worship service online in order to protect one another and give the healthcare workers in our area a chance to stay ahead of this curve. This arrangement is frustrating and heartbreaking. However, if you are watching this, even today, you are present. You are invited to share your stories about June with one another after the service, either in the comments below or by phone calls and cards. We will be gathered together again in the future. And then we will have a memorial service that you can join to support the family in person at that time. Thank you for your patience and for your understanding. From time to time in our lives, we come to face the mysteries of living. And one of those mysteries is death and what comes next. We hope and we trust our loved one has gone on to a realm where suffering and pain are non-existent. We trust that our Lord Jesus is walking side by side with that person deeper into the kingdom of God. But what comes next for those of us who still remain in this realm of existence? Over the course of the next few weeks, months, and years, that will depend largely on how we grieve our loss. We begin that in a formal way today with this service as we gather online to mourn with a family, pray for their strength and comfort, and praise for wide words and compassionate actions from us now and in the future. We also look to God, who we believe made us and whose own heart is sore and tender at our grief. To that end, hear these words of scripture. From Psalm 46, verses 1 and 2, and 10 through 11. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear. Though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Let us pray. Eternal God, we bless you for the great company of all those who have kept the faith, finished their race, and now rest from their labor. We praise you for those dear to us whom we name in our hearts before you. Especially we thank you for June whom you have now received into your presence. Help us to believe where we have not seen, trusting you to lead us through our years. Bring us at last with all your saints into the joy of your home, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Source of all wisdom, calm the troubled water of our hearts, 
and still all other voices but your own, that we may hear and obey what you tell us in your word through the power of your spirit. We pray this through Jesus' name. Amen. The scripture passages that I have chosen for today are two brief selections from Paul's uh, letters to the Ephesians and to the Romans. I'm going to save the Romans passage for the end because it's a lovely blessing. But this is Ephesians chapter 3, verses 16 through 21. I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Paul writes to the Christians in Ephesus these words. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Well, today is a very difficult day. All of us are under a great deal of stress. Because of COVID-19, our lives have been halted and shut off from what is normal. Activities we once took for granted are closed off to us. As a result, we are unable to gather together as a larger family of faith for June's funeral service, which makes this whole thing doubly difficult. We know these restrictions are there for the common good, limiting our contact with one another or giving the sick and those who are caring for them a fighting chance. We do this service today in this manner for the sake of others. And in doing so, the benefit that we give will come back to us. I think June would have understood this fundamental concept. I'm sure she does. She did for others all the time. And she did for others because she considered it her duty. And she would not turn her back on what she saw as doing what was right. In later years, her health limited her capacity to continue to do these things, but in her heart, she always gave. In this reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, the apostle is urging these disciples to fill their spiritual tanks with God's love and grace. As human beings, we naturally automatically do not live for others, but for ourselves. As we grow and as we mature, we learn how to put ourselves back a little bit and put others ahead of ourselves. It's difficult. Some people never learn it, and other people learn that lesson too well and put everyone in front of themselves, never giving time for their own sustenance and health. I'm not pointing at myself as a person who does that. I'm just pointing at myself as an example. We learn, ultimately, that only God can give us what is needed to live to please not ourselves, but to love and serve people around us. It is being rooted and grounded in God's love that we find within us the capacity to give and give freely and give joyfully and give with abundance, not thinking of ourselves. 
it is also only through God that God can equip us to accept each other as Jesus accepted us, which means also to learn to love ourselves as well. This is good and hopeful news because it means that God intends wholeness, abundance, peace for everyone. For those of us who are grieving right now, we're struggling. Like someone out in a vast ocean on a life raft. Yet, when we see the search and rescue plane fly overhead and wiggle its wings to tell us we've been seen, we know then that help is on the way. We can once again hope. In your grief and in your struggle, Jesus sees you and Jesus knows you. He will not leave you alone in this. Please take heart in that. The prophet Jeremiah writes in his Lamentations that God's compassion and mercy never fail. They are new every morning because God's faithfulness is great. This is what the hymn Great is Thy Faithfulness is based on, Jeremiah's Lamentations. Chapter 3. The Lord's loving kindness will never cease. In Hebrew, loving kindness can also be translated as doing for others. Here at the end of her life, June's doing for others comes to full fruit. We gather now to bear witness to all in her that was faithful and loving, all the ways that she sheltered and protected, all the ways that she fed and nurtured. In all of her giving, June planted love. If your spiritual tanks are running low right now because of grief and loss of June, grief and loss of our way of life, grief maybe in loss of hope that this will ever end, think about how doing for others refills your tank. Think about how much fruit both June and Jimmy produced through their generosity. Think about how rich your life is because of their faithfulness. Think about how they were sustained by following their Lord Jesus, who gave everything so that we can live and know life in abundance now and forevermore. Think on those things. Hold them fast. Put them around you like a coat. Rest your head on them like a pillow. Hold them close to your heart and let it come into you and sustain you. And then go and do like June did. This is the blessing that Paul writes to the letter to the Christians in Rome in his letter to the Romans. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in God so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us come now before God in a time of prayer. Let us pray. O God of grace, you have given us new and living hope in Jesus Christ. We thank you that by dying, Christ destroyed the power of death, and by rising from the grave, opened the way to eternal life. 
Help us to know that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Almighty God and Jesus Christ, you promised, promised many rooms within your house. Give us faith to see beyond touch and sight some sure sign of your kingdom. And where vision fails, to trust your love, which never fails. Lift heavy sorrow and give us good hope in Jesus so we may bravely walk our earthly way and look forward to glad reunion in the life to come. Eternal God, before whom generations rise and pass away, we praise you for all your servants who, having lived this life in faith, now live eternally with you. Especially, we thank you for your servant June, whose baptism is now complete in death. We praise you for the gift of her life, for all in her that was good and kind and faithful, for the grace you gave her that kindled in her the love of your dear name and enabled her to serve you faithfully. We thank you for the ways that she looked after her flock, her family, for the way she looked after her friends and the people that were important to her. We thank you that she knew what was right and she always did it. We thank you that for her death is past, pain, loneliness, and suffering ended, and that she has now entered the joy that you have prepared. Loving God, you are nearest to us when we need you most. In this hour of sorrow, we turn to you, trusting in your loving mercy. Hold our hearts gently in your loving hands. Provide strong arms of companions to hold us close, especially when we get back together. We pray all these things in the name of Jesus, who taught his disciples to say, this prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now, my friends, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the love of the God who created you, the peace of the God who redeemed you, and the strength of the God who sustains you be with you now this day and always. Go with God, my friends. Go in peace. Our final hymn is a favorite of June's. It is called, We Are Going Down the Valley. And this particular version was uh, produced by, or sung by men and women of the Apostolic Christian Church of America. Thank you for coming. We are going down the valley one by one With our faces toward the setting of the sun Down the valley where the mournful cypress grows Where the stream of death in silence onward flows We are going down the valley Sun. We are going down the valley.
just stand upon the river.